Welcome to my 8th annual Boycott Black Friday video. For 8 years now, on the day after Thanksgiving, I've posted a video to try to encourage my viewers to not fall victim to the consumer frenzy that is this time of year. Avoid the box stores, avoid those sales that are a trap, and try to support local and small and independent businesses. Uh, but more importantly, to try making your own gifts. Uh, so every year I do a little project that I think would make a nice gift. Uh, sometimes they're very simple, from like little building blocks um, to very complex complicated things like uh, this ukulele. So if you're a regular of this channel, you know that I've been fixated on finding purposes for reclaimed holocore doors, and I wanted to focus on using holocore door material for this build. So I had a couple ideas. You know, one was um, these sort of flat Lincoln logs that are just a simple kerf cut on the table saw. And um, I thought these are pretty cool, but I mean, you can just see from looking at them what I did. That's not much of a video. This other idea I was chasing down was a, um, <laughs> cause I'm, a, I'm not a good rule follower. I thought about making a puzzle with no rules. So this is all puzzle pieces that are the same shape that will fit together and you could just make your own puzzle out of them. But that's not really accessible because you kind of really need a laser to do that. And other versions I tried that were lower tech were just not fun. Then I remembered that I had made about four years ago this board game that I invented. And, um, and the video hasn't been posted for a long time. And I thought I would share this old video about this game I created, which is actually kind of fun. It's a simple game to make. It's a pretty simple game to play. And if you watch this video, you're going to see some of the original footage from the video that was posted in August of 2016. And I'm gonna pause it and do a little voiceover and kind of do some narration through there. First, let me show you how the game is played and then we will jump into the video and I'll, I'll see you later. And you'll see old me um, for a little while too. By old me, I mean young me. You understand how time works, right? Let me start by explaining how the game is played. So basically it's just six rows by six columns of cubes, so 36 cubes, and each one of them is painted a different color on each side. One side is blank, that's like your home side, then there's four colors, and then the fifth one is actually all colors, so that piece gets shared by all the players. There are three die that you roll. Two of them will give you the coordinates on the board, uh, and then one of them is a special move die. So the idea would be if you roll, say, C3, you would take block number C3 and flip it over to your color. And then the third die has your variable that you need to play. Sometimes it's roll again, sometimes it's do nothing, sometimes it's give one of your tiles to your opponent, and sometimes it's take one of your tiles from your opponent. And um, you can see the idea is, of course, to create a straight line, diagonal, or up and down, back and forth, whatever, of your color. The first color to do that wins. And the all symbol that you can see, I just flipped one over now, Everybody gets to use that, so if that's in your row, you can use it as your color, or your opponent could also use it. That's pretty much it. The games usually take about 10 or 15 minutes to play, and it is mostly chance, but there's a little bit of strategy, so it's a good game to play with players of all ages to sort of, you know, level the playing field. Now let's go back in time to the original video. The game I invented, it was based on, or inspired by, I should say, an art piece that I saw at a customer's house. I'm just basically saying everything I just said a minute ago here, but slower and more boring. And um, also, I'll let you know that any of the downloads you need, all the information is in the video description. Here, I was, had a website with it all set up. I think I was trying to sell them then or something. Now, here's my old voiceover with some interruptions. Now, I made all of my cubes out of some scraps of uh, reclaimed maple, or I should say just maple cutoffs that I got from Stu Morrison from uh, cncrouterparts.com. That company is now called Avid CNC, and they are a sponsor of mine, and at the time they were not. I had not gotten to CNC yet. He had mailed me a whole box of them, and I used some of them in the Junkle Ailey build that I did a little while back. But so I just very carefully measured out uh, one-inch cubes that I cut out of this maple, which... Took a pretty long time. I used the crosscut sled to finish them off, of course. Uh, miter sleds are so inaccurate, or miter saws rather. I'm also still using my old portable table saw. This is before Jimmy Duresta gave me his old uh, unisaw. Now, if I were to do this again, you can see I'm making a whole bunch of them here too. If I were to do this again, uh, I would probably not spray paint them. I'd probably find some better solution. But my theory was if they're all tight together, I could then just spray paint one side and uh, the tape would mask the sides. But there was some bleed 
here and there. So I would do this differently next time. Now I'm the upcyclist and I encourage everybody to do their best to not waste and to use reclaimed materials and you can cut up all your scraps like that to make cubes. But I have to point out too that you can also just go to the box store and buy one of these for about $3 and cut it in the cubes. You're going to get almost three dozen cubes out of this. Now since I did have a little bit of uh, overspray, uh, there's the two sides that don't have color I wanted to clean up as best I could. The one side stays blank, which is just the home sort of side of the cube, and then the other side gets all four colors on it because that side can be used by any color. It's like a, a wild card type thing, an all card. Now I had some leftover uh, quarter inch plywood scraps here and there. What? No hollow core doors? This one I spray painted black, but then the other ones that I made I actually used chalk paint, so you could use that to keep score or take notes on the inside of the lid. You'll see how that works later. And then I had these pieces of cedar left over. Uh, it's like a reclaimed cedar, three-quarter inch. This is really not the best wood to use because it's kind of soft, but I was just using what I had on hand. And, um, you know, it's just still kind of experimenting with the design as I made these. So just simply mitered them. I routed in a slot for the quarter slot for the wood. You can do that on the table saw or uh, on the the router table like I did. Clamped together the miter with the quarter inch plywood floating inside the slots. So now while that's drying I went and I just found some scrap oak I had. Again this could be anything and I cut these quarter inch by eighth inch. I think you can read the the plans to get the exact dimensions. And this is the layout template that will come with the plans of what the inside of the game board looks like. I could not find the original PDF of my drawing but you can figure this out. The negative spaces need to be big enough to hold your cube, just take into account the thickness of the pieces in between, and then I have that little tray that's about the same width as the cubes at the bottom for holding the dice. Now I found that if I taped all of these sticks together, I could cut them like one piece of wood. So what I want to do is slot them so I can stack them all on each other. I use the layout grid to figure out where the notches would be, and I just notched them on the table saw, as you can see here. Here I'm just dry fitting it. See how they just sort of, they're a little loose in there, but it also gave me some room for wiggle in case something was off. Now the, the squares are, the cubes are one inch, but the holes are one and an eighth inch, so they do fit in there loosely, because if they're too tight, it's too hard to play and get them out. Now when the box is done, I just set up this quick little spline jig, uh, just so I could quickly cut little slots and pop some hardwood in to help keep those miters nice and tight. I know, such a lame, <laughs> such a lame jig, but you don't need a big fancy jig for this, a little simple project like that. I cut up some walnut scraps that I had laying around into little wafers that I could then pop in for corner security. So then I just cut the box open, and uh, now we can actually access the inside. I had to clean that up a little bit. So that is chalk paint on most of them. Um, now, I, I was going to put hinges and a latch at first, but then I, I just really like magnets. So I instead drilled these holes. I got these quarter inch uh, rare earth magnets that are pretty strong. Drilled the holes on one side and used my um, hole center bits, little punches there to find the center, line it up, and then put magnets on the other side. I used a little super glue to pop them in there, but you got to be real careful to make sure all the magnets are facing the right direction so they don't accidentally repel and you get a nice strong seal. These are actually really strong. You could probably just have put magnets on one side and metal on the other side. But I want them to not fall apart. So when I put the game board inside, I only glued the pieces that go across on the top. I figured that was all that was necessary. And then there is the 11th piece that goes in across that bottom row to close it up. That extra space is just for storage. You'll see in a minute. I did my typical, um, highly professional finished job. My freehand letters and numbers look terrible. You can do something better than this. Oh, I had Bill Lavolsi of One Car Workshop make these labels for the tops of the box, and I think they came out beautiful. Thanks so much, Bill. And then I added the sort of logo in there to add a little color. Kind of made them look professional. These are the quick rules. There's like a rule sheet that comes in the directions and there's this you can print out for quick reference to what all the symbols mean on the dice. And I didn't have any laminate with me so I just used two pieces of packing tape and it worked great. That goes in with the dice. 
which I also just wood burned and drew. You could do whatever you want for all that lettering. You see the magnets work really well. That's my summer intern, Allie. I uh, taught her how to play the game so we could film this. And um, it's a fun game. It starts a little slow sometimes, but generally speaking, it takes about 15 minutes to play. With four people, sometimes it might take a little longer. And just like, like I said, it sort of has a different pace to it. So you just have to play it and find out if you like it or not. I've played this game several times with several different people, and every time we play it, there's always this point early in the game where they say, like, this game isn't any good, it's not going to work, and I just say, wait. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like what I do, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. And, and the rest of this stuff I'm saying is irrelevant, so let's uh, jump back to the future. I hope you enjoyed that and you're inspired by it, and maybe you'll uh, want to try and make it yourself. Now, originally when I had posted this, I had, I think I was selling the plans for a couple dollars or whatever, but because this is part of my Boycott Black Friday series, I'm just going to put them up for free. Links in the video description below will get you the information and the rules and stuff to make this. You can watch this video for reference, and you could make this so many different ways, of course. I would love if you shared your versions of the game with me on social media and sent me pictures of what you came up with. I do hope you will please consider this holiday season what you are buying and why. Uh, I feel like a lot of us just feel this need that we have to get gifts for people and they have to be of a certain value or a certain size and I, I would really appreciate especially this sort of interesting year we've had we, we've all been a little more introspective and reflective to really think about what you're doing and what you're buying and the footprint and the wake that it leaves behind and if you do need to purchase anything of course I would beg you to consider shopping from small independent businesses um, before going to the giant chains that are trying to you know, control the world. I don't know. And if you do find yourself needing to shop, of course, making every gift gets to be time consuming and sometimes impossible. Um, if you have any musicians in your life, of course, I would recommend you could go to newperspectivesmusic.com instead of going to the chain guitar stores. Uh, support a little guy like me and I am very, very little. I would appreciate that. So there's everything there from gift certificates to full guitars to guitar straps, all sorts of stuff there. You can check that out. And uh, even my metal squares, the woodworking tool that I invented. Uh, and you know what, just for the rest of the year in the spirit of this sort of thing, I'm gonna say, I don't want to say boycott Black Friday, that's too... How about support Plaid Friday? If you type in support Plaid Friday in the coupon code, you will save 15% off everything at newperspectivesmusic.com for the rest of the year, and I will greatly appreciate your support. And if you can't, that's great too. I would really rather see you make something than buy something from anyone, even me. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great holiday season and be good.